you've uh, you've caught me doing something that I, I do every few days. I sit in the front porch and play accordion. It's a keyboard you can carry around. Um, today I thought I'd look at why the accordion is awesome and talk about maybe a couple of unusual ways to use it and look at the way it's built. Well, not everything you need to know about accordion, but an awful lot. Let's go inside where it's quieter. Hi, okay, so we've come inside into a, you know, a perhaps more controlled environment. So we can talk about what makes this beast tick. Um, the accordions I own, and I own three, are all of the sort of European, Italian, German variety. They're called piano accordions, and you'll see a variety of them around. The right hand side, where my right hand is playing uh, essentially a keyboard, my left hand has a bank of buttons, and we'll talk about what those buttons do in a moment. The keyboard side of the accordion um, can make a number of different tones. We're using a free read system, and we'll look at how it's structured, but a single tone sounds kind of like a harmonica or a melodica. They're also free read instruments. There are banks of reeds, and I can double that up with a the same key, an octave, and I can stack them. But perhaps the most interesting uh, thing about European accordions and uh, French and Italian styles, and you hear it in German too, this is a German accordion, is you'll take the upper sound and add a second bank, slightly detuned. See if you can hear the chorusing effect. It sounds, sounds like the chorus pedal that you might put on an electric guitar, and it, honestly, it melds beautifully with instruments when there's slight tuning vagaries. Well, I just love that sound. I can double everything up, all three ranks of reeds. We'll talk more about it in a moment, but let's take a look at what's going on over here on the left-hand side. Now, um, these buttons do multi-functions, and the row, the I will just call them uh, horizontal rows from your perspective, each horizontal row is one chord set. I have a bass note C, and then right above it, the entire C major chord. Above that, the entire C minor chord. So bass note chord, bass note chord, bass note chord, bass note chord. Cool, right? Above that, I don't know if you can hear it, it's the dominant chord, the major third, minor seventh. And above that, on some accordions, a diminished chord. It's terrific, right? So how is all this organized? Is it a scale? No. It's organized around the principle of the circle of fifths and what we call the primary chords in any given key. Um, the tonic chord, if it was C, would have a fifth, and that's right above it, and a fourth, the subdominant. So that's right below it. Basically, I have the primary chords of the key available to me above and below my tonic center. That's the one chord right above it is the five chord. Back to the one. And now here's the four chord. Super, right? It's easy to play chords with the left hand. There's a, an alternate bass note is the major third, so you can play bass lines. If you want, or even more complicated ones. I have a broken down, <laughs> broken down, I took it apart, accordion behind me, and I thought we would um, just take a look. I'll, I've got another camera set up on it, and hopefully this will be useful to take a look at it. All right, 
So when you, op when you open up an accordion, this is what you see. Um, this is the button side of the accordion, and you can see this rank of buttons down here. And these are the free reeds. Each reed vibrates when the air is blown through it as I open and close a gate. The gate is essentially the button. Fascinating, right? There has to be a reed for every note, and there has to be a complicated mechanism that switches between the number of keys for each of them. It's, it's really, it's a, it's a beast of a mechanical object. It makes a bit of noise when you're playing it. Well, this is my smaller ladies size Cuccinelli. It's uh, easy to see the open interior of the bellows. The bellows are lungs. It draws air in and it expels it out. And over here, I have a slightly different set of tabs. This one hasn't got that detuned sound. It hasn't got the musette sound. I've got um, a primary and then a high and then a low. It's a lighter instrument and um, a little bit easier to play around with. Well, in any case, Pauline Oliveros, the deep listening composer and teacher, played accordion, and, and I have to say she really influenced me a lot. Um, I've got to say what I'm interested in these days with accordion is this effect, and I'll just play one example of it. So you remember over here I have buttons, right? That's an entire C major chord, and this is C minor. I'm going to play just the upper rank and then I'm going to add the lower rank so you can hear the difference. Let's see. I'll do it with my right hand. That's the typical thing. It's the same chord. I'm just adding an octave lower. C, E flat, G. If I added a major triad B flat to that, I would get C, E flat, G, B flat, D, F. It's a beautiful minor 11 chord. Alternate that with E flat major. polychords on the accordion. It records beautifully in stereo. As you can imagine, the stereo field on this is fascinating because the ranks of reeds for this side are on this side and the ranks of reeds for that side are over there. It's got a lot of air. It's a beautiful organic breathing instrument and it's a keyboard you can carry around with you. Well, there's lots more to learn about the accordion. There are Russian types, there are button types of accordions, there's a deep um, Central American and South American accordion tradition in the folk music. And there are accordions that aren't chromatic, that are just diatonic, like a, like a diatonic harmonica. You just pick up the right accordion and uh, hope for the best. Well, this has been a lot of fun. Um, thanks, this, this was actually a response to someone um, asking me about it, and I'm just very happy to be able to, to show you a little bit more about, about, uh, about the, an instrument which I, I just really love. I hope this has been useful and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.